Hi everyone, I'm here at Woods Mill Nature Reserve and uh, I just want to show you some amazing pond creatures that we have living in the depths and amongst the weeds here. And we're going to talk about the big bad predators that we find here in the pond. Let's have a look. So first up we've got the greater water boatman or back swimmer. Uh, so these belong to the true bug family, so a bit like the shield bugs you get flying around in the summer. They're often called stink bugs because they release a horrible smell. Same type of creature. They can actually fly from pond to pond, but if you look at them in the water, they're pretty well adapted. As the name suggests, back swimmers, they swim sort of upside down. So if you were a creature looking up, there's almost a shiny sheen on the wings, um, so you wouldn't see anything there. They've got two huge paddle-like legs at the back for kind of powering themselves around in the water. And then they've got four legs being an insect that are used for grabbing and gripping. Uh, they will eat pretty much anything smaller than them or anything that falls into the water. So worms, pond skaters, sometimes tadpoles or small fish. Uh, and they've got a, a piercing mouth part that actually injects a venom. So they kind of grab onto their prey with their front legs, stab it, uh, and then kind of suck out the juices. Uh, one of everyone's favourite pond creatures are tadpoles, and we're quite cool. We've got a frog tadpole, a toad tadpole, and a newt tadpole to show you. Um, as they grow up, they, they switch from uh, feeding on plants, uh, so typically algae or other small pond plants, as they're growing up from their small larval stage. But as they reach maturity and almost start to develop those legs and things, they'll start to eat other creatures. So nymphs and beetles and worms basically anything that will go in their mouths they'll swallow them up uh, and they're a really important part of the food chain within the pond they'll feed all those other bigger creatures like the fish uh, and the nymphs and the beetles basically everything likes to eat tadpoles so they're, they're that's why they lay so much spawn is that not many of the babies will survive but there's a lot of them so hopefully some of them will make it all the way to being an either an adult frog newt or toad so next up is another big bad predator, it's the dragonfly nymph. So nymph is a larval stage of any kind of fly, so it's kind of the larval stage, the baby stage of a dragonfly. It's actually a lot longer than the adult flying dragonfly's life stage. Um, some of the dragonfly species uh, nymphs will actually live for about five years in a pond before they hatch out and only spend that one summer on the wing again. So yeah, they're quite big. Um, they actually breathe through their bottoms, uh, so they have gills in the back end, and they can actually suck in water and blow it out to propel themselves around. So they can move quite quickly when they want to. Um, and they're yeah, a big stealthy hunter, often kind of creeping around on the, the sediment at the bottom of the pond uh, and looking for, for prey. They've actually got um, almost like a mask that shoots out from under their chins. Um, you know, kind of pincers on it so they grab hold of their prey even if it's a few um, centimeters in front of them it can grab anything that moves past say like a fish or a tadpole uh, and then they gobble it up so yeah pretty pretty impressive little hunters next up is the great diving beetle as the name suggests it's great uh, and it does a lot of diving so it's got big paddle like back legs huge great uh, pincers at the front for grabbing onto its food uh, and yeah it's a kind of nice yellow stripes down the down the sides of the wings and kind of a green back so they're a big strong predator they'll eat pretty much anything smaller than them so tadpoles and fish and nymphs and worms anything they can grab hold of they're actually even more uh, impressive as a larval stage so when they're kind of a baby beetle they look almost like a scorpion or a, like the devil's coach horse beetle that you might have seen walking around on land. Big sharp pincers at the front of its face uh, and the tail end can rear up um, a bit like a scorpion. Uh, and yeah, they'll, they'll swim around with their kind of paddly legs and wait for anything to move past and then grab it with those pincers uh, and basically suck out the insides. So they're one of my favorite things to find, but not good news if you're a pond creature. So certainly one of the top predators in any pond are newts. Uh, they are almost like a water lizard. So four legs, a nice long tail, very streamlined. When you see them swim, they almost like 
like to use just their tail, a bit like a crocodile. They'll kind of pull their legs to the side of the body and then propel themselves through the water. Uh, they'll eat, again, pretty much anything smaller than them. So fishes, worms, nymphs, beetles. Uh, and they'll also catch things that have fallen into the pond. So I, I've sometimes seen them catching damselflies that are coming down to lay their eggs in the water. And they'll grab hold of them and they almost thrash them into submission, sort of shaking their head side to side uh, until the damselfly gives up. Uh, they're mostly a nocturnal creature, so you'll see them more active uh, as it gets dark. And so the final top predator that you'll find around ponds, not always in the ponds, but around ponds, are grass snakes. Uh, they sometimes call them the water snake because uh, they are so often found around water and they're very adept swimmers. Uh, if you ever see them on the water, they can take off, swim faster than most creatures that are designed to live only in water. Um, so their favorite food are frogs uh, uh, and amphibians. Uh, they kind of switch their diets early in the year. They'll feed on a lot of fish, um, but as the summer goes on, they'll feed on newts uh, and lots of frogs. They're a visual hunter, so they tend to uh, track down their prey using eyesight, but also they've got quite a good sense of smell using that tongue to sniff out um, any of the, anything that they want to eat. Uh, and they don't have venom, so they can't cause a, a venomous bite to subdue their prey. Uh, they don't, they're not a constrictor, so they don't squeeze onto the, their prey. Uh, and they, uh, so they have to swallow their food whole. Um, so they'll grab onto anything they want to eat, say a frog, and they'll bite onto it uh, and swallow it, often alive, swallow it whole all the way down. So yeah, definitely one of the top predators in any pond. So hopefully you've seen some of the amazing and fascinating creatures that you might find living in ponds. If you do come to somewhere like Woods Mill for pond dipping, make sure your nets and bowls are already clean because there's quite a big threat of spreading uh, diseases, uh, particularly with amphibians. Uh, treat any creatures that you do find kindly and gently and make sure you put them all back. If you wanted to uh, attract these pond creatures to your garden, you could put in anything as small as a bucket or a sink, uh, put it in the ground and it's one of the best ways to attract wildlife to your garden. Not only things that want to live in the water, but things that need a drink or a bath, uh, particularly in the hot weather. So um, yeah, put in ponds, it's a great way to uh, make your garden even better for wildlife.